Hello, hi, welcome to the uh, Theory of Computation. So in these videos, we're going to go through the slides, the classroom slides, that are associated with the book, The Theory of Computation Making Connections. My name is Jim Heffron. I'm the author of the book. And you can uh, find the book for free online. It's uh, at the site that you see here, heffron.net slash computation. Okay, and we will go through the slides that uh, are taken from the book, and so they, these slides are a good way to get an introduction to each section. Of course, then to, to get the full um, the full benefit from each section, you you want you want to be looking reading through the material, and also very importantly, you want to be doing the exercises. I'll uh, note that the answers to the exercises are also available at that website fully worked answers to the exercises. So you should be able to go through the question and work on it for a few minutes. Maybe you get stumped. You can turn and look at the answer and say, ah, oh, I see now, and go on and try the next one. OK. All right. So before we start, I just wanted to have a little bit of an introduction about the theory of computation. So the theory of computation as a subject is something like a century old. We'll mark the start as being uh, the, the uh, a paper from Alan Turing defining a Turing machine. It is uh, still very, very active today. Every day there are new results, very exciting results. It has the uh, the advantage of being of having a full body of theory behind it that we'll cover in the book, or at least we'll introduce in the book because uh, of the century of work that many brilliant people have put in. But it also has the advantage that uh, it is very much sort of today. The kinds of steps that people are taking today are uh, are, are things that a uh, a student can understand what they're about, or at least have a good grasp on what they're about, and uh, can feel that they too can um, maybe someday make a contribution to that subject, maybe not so far away, because the subject still has very, uh, very approachable parts. Uh, the theory of computation as a subject as a whole has, an, has another advantage of being delightful. The fact is that it is about a fascinating question. The question basically is, what can we do? What can be done? More precisely, what can be done with a mechanism? What can you do, do in some sense, uniformly? So what problems can you solve? And that's a very uh, compelling question. And, and uh, a, a person th thinks, you know, uh, well, what can you do? Is there anything that you can't do? We will find that there are some things that you cannot do. There are lots of things we don't know, but there are, there are some, we know there are some problems that you cannot solve. And that alone is a compelling reason to, su to study the subject. In particular, one of the things I like about this course, I teach this course all the time, and one of the things I like about this course is that I think it changes the way a student views the world. You see the world differently understanding the ideas in this course. Okay, enough, enough evangelical <laughs> talk. So a brief outline of the course. So this is a standard course. This is a course that's given at many schools. And of course, it differs from school to school a little bit. But we cover in this, in this book and in these uh, lectures, we'll be covering the, the standard topics that most people will, will cover. The definition of computation is where we start. Turing machines is the phrase that, the, uh, that a person might know who has never taken the course. Turing machines and, uh, and recursive functions. That's the first chapter. In the second chapter, we go on to understand what problems cannot be solved, unsolvable problem. And in particular, a person who's taking this course may have heard the word halting problem. And we'll relate lots of other problems to the halting problem and come to get some general understanding of what can't be solved. Then in the third chapter, we will uh, do a, a, a study, a quick study, of uh, languages and grammars and a little review also of, the, uh, of graphs, which is the topic, uh, the, the language in which we often phrase uh, the problems in this subject. The fourth chapter studies finite state machines. These are machines in which memory is, uh, is, is bounded. So finite state machines, you sometimes hear people call them finite state automata regular expressions, regular languages. And then finally, in the fifth chapter, in the last chapter, we'll study complexity. We'll start off by talking about big O, which is a familiar topic to people who have had any kind of programming at all. And then we'll go on and uh, finish the chapter by uh, reaching uh, reductions between problems, uh, uh, P and NP, and the question of whether P equals NP. OK, so we have a long stretch, a lot of work to do, but it is very exciting. 
One of the things I want to talk about with the book that I want to urge a student to, to, to think about is that in the book there are a lot of connections. That's why it's called Making Connections. There are a lot of links to things that are online. There are a lot of topics at the back of the book that are given a little extra exploration. There are things at the end of the chapters. There are illustrations that a person can look at. So the idea there is to connect what we're studying to the things that you already know or that you at least already know a little bit about. So I urge you to explore these connections. One of the great things about the, about the world we live in is uh, you can get online and you can click here and click here and you, and you, and you go down a rabbit hole and you, you, when, you, when you emerge sort of an hour later, you've learned all kinds of interesting stuff about what you started out thinking about. And that's what we try to take advantage of with this book is we try to make connections between the things that you already have in your background and the new things that you're trying to learn. We try to give you a place, in other words, to hang the new ideas, a, a sort of structure, a skeleton, a framework on which you can hang the new ideas. It's a big subject. It's an exciting subject. I don't know of any better subject. Okay. All right. Good luck with it.